Hi everyone, this is Dr. Stefan. In this one, I'd like to discuss a little bit about using steroid inhalers and whether there are any long-term side effects of this, because this is a question that has come up uh, on one of my videos, in one of the comments, and it's to do with the using a combination inhaler such as uh, Symbicort. So basically this is the turbohaler device. So anyway, but other inhalers such as the Foster inhalers, for example, this one, or the Cerethide, this one, they all contain a little bit of inhaled corticosteroid. Now, this is a type of medication that has an anti-inflammatory effect. And in the cases, uh, in cases where we are treating asthma, this is basically the effect that we want. We want to treat the airway inflammation, which can be excessive in these cases. It's to do sometimes with having allergies, high eosinophils, a lot of things. And People who suffer with asthma, when they have uncontrolled airway inflammation, they do tend to get a lot more asthma attacks. So by controlling the inflammation, we reduce the number of asthma attacks. We reduce the need to use rescue inhalers such as Ventolin. So basically, we are trying to use a chronic treatment, low dose of a chronic treatment to control the airway inflammation and prevent complications, prevent hospitalizations, prevent a lot of things. So actually taking your asthma treatment regularly does ensure that you are having the best outcomes long-term. And you're also preventing that inflammation eventually turning into a fixed obstruction, which can happen over many years of uncontrolled asthma. And that's the situation where the inhalers don't really work as much anymore because the airways have become persistently narrowed. So we're trying to avoid all these things. Now we tend to treat this in asthma with inhaled corticosteroids. So like I said, anti-inflammatory medication. Now corticosteroids have a bad rep, a bad reputation, because people associate them with a lot of side effects. So such as weight gain, high blood pressure, diabetes, etc, etc. Problem is, many people do think about uh, the inhaled, uh, about the side effects of steroids when we talk about tablets. And this is a very important distinction to make because in a tablet form, yes, the steroid that we would ingest would be a high dose. And if we take that high dose of steroid over a long period of time, that can indeed lead to side effects. I'm not denying that. The thing is, in inhalers, we have a very low dose. So it's tiny compared to what we have in a tablet. So if I were to make a rough comparison, although the equivalence is not exactly the same, the lowest strength tablet of prednisolone that we would normally prescribe is five milligrams of prednisolone. And we generally prescribe a couple of these tablets each day for <laughs> steroid treatment. This is when we take tablets, pills, oral treatment. In the inhalers, even if we use, for example, a steroid inhaler, maybe two puffs twice a day, we're barely scratching a gram, uh, sorry, a milligram. So basically, five times less than the lowest tablet. And actually, it's probably even less than that that gets absorbed in the body because the molecules of steroids that are used in inhalers are generally designed in such a way to act locally and to be minimally um, ad absorbed in the rest of the body. So... That's one thing. So basically the lowest dose possible of steroid is actually being used to control the condition because we are inhaling it straight where we need to. We're not swallowing a tablet that needs to dissolve in the rest of the body, circulate throughout the body, eventually reach the lungs. We're inhaling it topically, locally, where it's needed. There's another facet to this as well that I would like you to think about. If you have uncontrolled asthma, one of the ways in which we treat severe asthma attacks when you end up in hospital or you have really, really bad attacks is to give steroid tablets to gain control, to gain some control of that inflammation that's rampant in the airways and to actually get you to a point where you can have a decent life and you're not going from asthma attack to asthma attack. So we're trying to establish control so that you feel better and you're perhaps coming out of hospital. You're coming out of that flare up, that exacerbation of the asthma. Problem is, if you have a lot of these asthma exacerbations that you could have otherwise controlled potentially with just taking low-dose steroid inhalers, you might actually end up having a higher cumulative dose of steroid that you ingest because you may need to go in and out of hospital every month or you may need to see your family doctor, your GP to get rescue packs of antibiotics, of steroids, high doses, tablets that you take over and over again. And you can imagine that if you are taking 30 milligrams of prednisolone every day for 
seven days, 14 days, then you take a break for a month and you do that again, you are actually ingesting a lot more steroid than you would by just taking regular inhalers. And I know this is not the perfect situation. I wish you people didn't need to take any medication, any inhalers, tablets, whatever the case may be. But in the case of asthma, we are only now moving into the realm of biologic treatments, targeted therapies that actually manage to spare the body of steroids. And we're trying to, to reduce the, the amount of steroid that we give either through inhalers or tablets to control the asthma. And there are a lot of uh, situations in which we can treat asthma with more modern medications. They don't completely cure the disease, it doesn't go away, but we achieve much better control. And there's been actually a lot of progress in this field of asthma research. I'm actually jealous because my main niche of uh, practice is interstitial lung disease or lung fibrosis, where we don't have as many medications available as the asthma physicians do. And I am a little bit jealous about that. But that's what I'm trying to tell you with this video. It's important to try to use the medication that's right for you, to try to talk to your doctor to see what's the, the best treatment in your case that obtains asthma control, prevents long-term complications, but also minimizes side effects. And what's the minimal medication for that? And just as a word of um, advice, so basically related to how asthma treatment is normally conducted, you don't have to be always on the same level of treatment. So asthma treatment is conducted in a stepwise fashion. So sometimes when your asthma is really bad, you may need a bit of a higher dose of the inhaler or other treatments that you're taking to get control. Once you achieve control, the inflammation goes down, you can then go to a lower step of treatment, lower doses, less medication, less uh, inhalers, tablets, etc. Then if the asthma goes bad again, we step up again. So it's always an ongoing thing with asthma. It's a chronic condition, doesn't tend to go away completely, unfortunately. And it does require seeing doctors every now and then for having regular checkups. And those would be more often when the asthma is bad, but when the asthma is good, you would just develop an action plan with your doctor, when to see them next, what to do if the situation gets under, uh, loses control. So I hope this was helpful. If you have further questions, do leave them in the comment section below. But I just wanted to, to just highlight the fact that there are very few side effects long term from using inhaled steroids because the low doses are very low. So again, I hope this was helpful. I'm not sure if it answered the question well, but uh, at least I hope it provides some reassurance. If anything, maybe a good basis of discussion for uh, your future conversation with your doctor. All the best and good health.